Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh and in this video, we'll continue to learn about time series in pandas. Uh, specifically, we'll look at different types of ways you can aggregate the resample data. And finally, we'll also look at how you can iterate over a resampled object using a for loop. So let's get into Jupyter Notebook and start coding. Here in Jupyter Notebook, I've imported three libraries, NumPy, Pandas, and DateTime. And these are the versions that I'm using for Python, Pandas, and NumPy. So for aggregate, we'll first create a data frame. And the data frame will have three columns and we'll have a time series as indices. So df is equal to pd.dataframe. And here we have column a np dot random dot random integers and they go from 0 to a high of 10 and we'll have size of 10 so we'll have 10 rows and then b uh, this could be another set of numbers 1 2 3 uh, 4 and 5 and we repeat that twice and then we have a last column again this will be 11 12 13, 13, 14, 15, and we'll repeat that as well. Next, we'll create uh, indices. So for index, we'll use a time series. So pd.date underscore range. We'll start uh, the date at 2020-07-27, and periods is equal to 10 because we have 10 rows and frequency we'll set it to one minute so now when we look at our data frame this is how the data frame looks we have the indices which is just the same day but then we have these minutes that are changing so we have from 0 to 9. now the first uh, the method to resample a data frame is same as what we had previously used with a series so here we'll create a new variable xs that will store the value of the object that we sample. So we, for resampling a data frame, we type df.resample and here we'll resample uh, with uh, three minutes frequency. And if we look at this object xs, this is uh, what the object is. Now uh, we can now use this object to do different types of operations. So we type excess dot mean minimum this is the output we get and if you remember from previous video where we have gone in much detail i'll uh, just walk through briefly on this uh, the way this works is when we are trying to get a min and we have a three minute interval uh, the default here is label left close left so uh, let's run that and see if that's how it is. So df.resample, and if we use the frequency of three minutes, and then we use the label is equal to left, and then we use closed is equal to left, and then use the min. So this is another way to uh, get the same output. So as you can see, the output is the same. And one thing I missed earlier, let me go ahead and add a random seed np dot random dot seed of one so that the results that I'm getting uh, you'll get the same results as well. Okay, so as you can see here, the output uh, resampled output for min is the same in both the cases. The way this works is uh, for the first uh, we have three minute intervals, so we have these three minutes zero, one, and two, and within each row. We are looking for a minimum so in column uh, column a we have a minimum or uh, as five then column b we have minimum as one and column c we have minimum as 11 so we have five one and 11 as the values in columns and now for the index because we are closing on left we have this particular timestamp as index in the output so this particular timestamp Moving on to the next set of three minutes, we have these three rows. Here, the minimum in column A is zero, and that's what we have here. 
then the minimum in column b is 1 and in column c it's 11 so we have 0 1 11 so that's what we get here 0 1 and 11 now in this case because we are close uh, the label is left uh, here we see that uh, this particular timestamp is used as the index so uh, 0 3 minutes and that's what we get right here and so on for all other uh, rows in the data frame next let's look at how we can get the mean value so x access dot mean and here we get this works the same way now for column a uh, if you look at this first set of three minutes sorry these first three rows we have five eight and nine so if we try to get the mean of five plus eight plus nine divided by three so this this is we get 7.33 and that's what we have here again this is the label is left with the default label and therefore we have this sorry therefore we have this timestamp of 00 as the label here and in the similar fashion the values are calculated for all other uh, columns for uh, other three minute intervals in the data frame now so far we have calculated the mean for the entire data frame we can also go ahead and calculate for just one column that is going to be just a series so the way to do that would be xs uh, then open square bracket within quotes we want to specify the column name here it's a then if you specify dot mean this will give the values only for that particular column so we have 7.3 1.6 and so on for this particular column a again apart from column just using just one column we could also use multiple selected columns by names to do that we would type xs then open square brackets twice and then within inner square bracket we would type within quotes the names of the column separated by comma so call uh, a and then we have the second column b and after this we'll specify the operation we want so here we are trying to calculate mean and that's how we can calculate the mean for those two columns here uh, now we are coming to aggregate so the uh, above what we have been doing is aggregation we can also go ahead and use the agri aggregation function so to use that function what we want to type is let me pull the data frame again here so we are going to type xs dot xs of a and because we are going to use just that column and then dot agg or you could also type aggregate and within open parentheses and square brackets np dot mean and np dot standard deviation so this way now we are calculating two values for that column a earlier we just had one so we can sp specify a list of uh, items that we need to calculate when we are using the aggregate function uh, uh, we could also use the same uh, method to calculate the aggregate aggregated values for the entire data frame as well uh, in this way so each of the column now has mean and standard deviation calculated as you can see in uh, just one line of code apart from this we could also uh, specify different functions to be calculated for each of those rows in the data frame and to do that we need to specify that in the agg command so the way we would type that is xs dot agg opens parenthesis and within curly braces we need to specify key value pairs so the key would be the name of the column on which the function needs to be applied so and the value would be the list of functions or just one function so for column a let's go ahead and specify np.mean and np.sum and then we have the column b for column b we'll create a lambda function so lambda function uh, here is taking a value x and then calculating them mean of that and just to make it different we'll add number multiplied by 10 
after that for column c uh, we'll again specify a list np.median and np.sum so when we run this we get a different set of values calculated for each of those columns in the data frame df we have mean sum lambda median and then sum so that's the advantage of using the aggregate function it, it can be more customized uh, to uh, the cal types of calculations it can perform now let's look at another way so far what we have been doing is using the uh, time series that was available as an index what happens if there is no time series as an index does that work at? and it does so when index is not date time so we don't have the time series as index how do we use that type of data frame so uh, what we can do now is remove that and put it in a column so to remove the index and put it as a column we'll type df dot reset underscore index that will reset it so if you want to see how that works so this is how it will reset now we have to relabel this column to relabel this column we'll type rename and then open parenthesis and col columns uh, here we'll specify the old name which is the index and then we'll specify the new name and let's call the new name dt and thus we now have a data frame where there is no uh, index uh, there's no time index and the time index has been converted to a column dt and we'll store this back in our data frame df so that we can use it so here if we now go ahead and sample this df dot we sample and again if we use the three minute time interval now what we have to do is we need to specify the name of the column that has the time series so here uh, we need to specify the name which is dt and after that we can use the aggregate mean and thus we can calculate the aggregated uh, value for that data frame and as you've noticed the time index automatically gets put as index in the output similar to this we can uh, perform other operations as well so let's see df is equal to df dot set underscore index what we are doing here is adding multiple index to the data frame so dt and that's the first index we have and then this another level will use just letters m and n and I'll repeat them so that they are for all the rows now when we run this we have created a data frame df dot index if you look this is a multi-index uh, data frame now we have level zero that has the time series and then level one we have this m and n listed there now to resample such a series we can specify the level we need we want to use for resampling and to do that we would type df dot resample and here again we are going to use three minutes we could uh, we could have written 3t uh, i've written three minute dot and then in here we can specify the level so sorry df dot resample and then we specify the level is equal to zero and after this we'll aggregate it so we, we are going to take a sum of this so as you can see the because we specified level zero it was able to pick the time series from the index and perform the sum on, on the data frame columns that we had uh, mentioned there and similarly uh, apart from using number as level we could also specify the name of the level uh, such as dt directly and for that we would type df dot resample and again we are going to use an interval of three minutes and then level is equal to dt uh, so that is the name of the time series index and then again we are going to get the sum so as you can see the output is the same uh, and the dt 
is what was used to calculate the sum uh, for a three minute interval for all the columns in that particular data frame df now moving on let's look at how we can iterate through uh, different uh, uh, groups within the data frame so let's iterate for iterating the uh, sampled object we let's go ahead. this is the data frame that we have we are going to drop the levels so let's do that df dot drop and we let's drop level df dot drop level and let's drop level one because that's the m and n and now we have a data frame df uh, which is uh, sorry in place is equal to true or we can just do that so we have now a data frame which has just one index which is our time series and we can go ahead and sample this as we did earlier xs is equal to df dot resample and we can uh, get 3t as the time interval so we if we want to check what is inside this object that we have resampled if we type this uh, we just get that string back but if we want to look at all the objects each of them we can also uh, do this which is for name and group in xs we wanted to print let's say print group group name and i'm gonna add a new line here and then add the name then the second part that we can go ahead and print is data in group so data that's within that group that we just printed the name of above and sorry and here we'll print group and finally just printing a line to separate the output so now when we run this we can see that the first group group name was uh, 0727 and that's expected because the default label is left and the group is 0 1 2 uh, 0 1 and 2 so the first three rows of the uh, data frame which is three minute time interval that's the group uh, that we have first and so on for the rest of the data frame this is a really um, easy method to kind of get intuition about what's resampled uh, and this can help you understand how the closed and the labeling works while using resample that was it for this video i hope in this video you've learned how to use resample along with aggregate function and also how to iterate over a resampled group object in next video we'll continue learning more about uh, other items within uh, this resample and time series please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you